Okay, I'm going to try to explain geometric series, and if I screw it up, SARS. Here's a geometric series. In this geometric series, you recognize A equals 1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, right? So A6 equals 32. R equals, what do we do in each time? Multiplying by 2, so R equals 2. So here are some, some facts that we know. If we wanted to sum this thing, we're going to call this S of N, okay? Uh, S of N equals that plus that plus that plus that plus that plus that. We're going to try and figure out a way to come up with S of N without having to go through the process of adding these up. I mean, if there's just six of them, we could probably do it. We can do this in our head. But if there were 75 terms and it was like root 2 and blah, 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 that would be impossible. So we're going to have to come up with a formula for this. So here's what some genius did probably back in ancient Greek times. They said to themselves, what if we took SN and multiplied it by minus R? What? What if we took SN and multiplied it by negative r. What would we get? Negative r times sn. Well, that would be negative 2 times the sum. So negative 2 times each of these things, right? Now if we did negative 2 times the sum, it's the same as negative 2 times each of those. So what is negative 2? Let's just go negative r sn will equal I'm just going to offset this a little bit. There would be a minus 2, because minus 2 times 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 times 2 is minus 4. Minus 2 times 4 is minus 8. Minus 2 times 8 is minus 16. Minus 2 times 16 is minus 32. And minus 2 times 32 is minus 64. So negative Sn is this stuff. Positive S or sorry, negative R S N is this stuff, and S N itself is this stuff here. So what you'll find is that if we subtract this from that, in other words, if we go S N minus R S N, in other words, this stuff minus this stuff, or this stuff minus this stuff, the only difference between these two are this term here, the minus 64, and the plus 1. It's the only thing left. Everything else cancels out. Cancel, 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 cancel. Equals 1 minus 64. And you say, whoop de doo But I say, let's factor out the SN here. So we've got SN times 1 minus R equals a, which is the first one, minus 64. And what is 64? That is r times the last term, or r times a n. Dun, dun, dun. What is R? Actually, before we, uh, I'm just going to translate this, but I just made a mistake here. <laughs> SN1 minus R equals A minus, rather than put that in here, because AN, AN, as we know, equals A1 times R to the N minus 1. So instead of AN, in there, we're going to put in this stuff here, which is, R times A times R to the N minus 1. And R times R to the N minus 1 is R to the N. So what that means is A minus A R to the N. SN equals, whoops, 1 minus R equals. There we go. So where are we with this? 
we could factor out the a here. We can divide both sides by 1 over 1 minus r. So Sn, let's leave this here for now, equals a 1 minus r to the n. Divide both sides by this junk here, and we get Sn equals a times 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. Now, show up at any party and show them this formula, they'll throw you out. However, through this logic we've derived it and we've got a formula for s of n because some genius decided, hey, what happens if we take the entire thing and multiply it by negative r and compare it to the original, minus it and all that kind of junk. Even if you didn't follow that, even if you don't care, even if you're ready to slam your computer into the wall, this is the formula that you need to be able to apply. Now there's another way of looking at this here, there's another way of phrasing it. Uh, the other way of phrasing it is if you know what the last term is, remember back up here where it's, uh, where it's a to the n, we could take this here and if we go s of n 1 minus r equals 8 minus r l, and there's l again, uh, if we know what the last term is, let's divide both sides by 1 over r, and you got Sn equals A minus Rl over 1 minus r. And that's our second formula. So these are our two formulas we can use. This one if we know what the last term is, and this one if we don't know what the last term is, but we know what r is and we know what a is. Notice that you can find out the sum just by knowing the first term and the ratio. And n, of course the number of terms. So one, two, three variables. There's a fourth variable there, so if you're given three, you should be able to figure out the other one. Here, we have one, two, three, four variables once again. If you're given three, you should be able to figure out the missing one. And all the problems that you run into with geometric series will be applications of one of these two formulas. If last term known if not. So there, there's our new formulas. And since you're given those on your test, just make sure you can apply them by having practiced some problems.